Alan, how's it going? Yes. Thank you. Very good, bro. Thank Very you for good. taking time out your day to do this with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, bro. Never mind. Um, we'll start with Fight Camp then, if you don't mind. Obviously, you've made a lot of noise after a dominating win over a fairly decent leveled opponent in Shondell Winters, and you took him out in very good fashion. What was that experience like for you, being on the main stage, all eyes on you, and to put in a performance like that? I think you cut out a bit. Bro, oh, I got a call from my coach. Fuck. All right. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Do you want me to repeat that one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, let's go from you. No worries. What was it like for you to, you know, be on a big stage at fight camp under, obviously, Eddie Hearn put on in his back garden and to deliver such a devastating performance? What was that feeling like for you? Well, it was amazing. You know, I, I do it. Uh, I, I worked for it 10 years, but when it comes, it, it, it always feels uh, you know, incredible. And uh, just just the way Dillian believed in me, you know, to put me on that, that, big, that big kind of fight, you know, he was like, 200 places in front of me, so yeah. everything, everything was like unreal, unreal, bro. I'm still not aware of it at all. <laughs> yeah. You've, um, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you further down. How did that relationship with Dillian come about? Did you just come in as a, maybe an aspiring partner for him and then he agreed to sign you? How did you and Dillian connect? Well, listen, I was, I was on a bad streak, you know, I lost my national championship, like, uh, I don't know in fourth month, and I was I was a little bad. I was I was about to quit boxing. You know, and I'm ten years into this boxing, and they steal it from me. You know, it was a robbery. Yeah. So I was like, you know, fuck this shit. I'm not gonna do it no more and stuff. And then offer came to spar Dillian for for money. You know, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going. I was I was like 88 kilos. Then then he was he was 130. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's go. And I went to Love Pro University. And we had a beautiful tear-up, you know, first sparring was amazing. We did five rounds and he was in, instantly hooked on me, you know. He was like, I'm going to manage you, no way you're going to go out of boxing, you know. So, yeah, it was beautiful. It was true, true blood, sweat and tears, you know. Yeah, you meet true, like a real boy. Yeah, I can imagine them spars being worth paying for, to be honest with you. Your style and his coming together were the absolute wars then. Yeah, it's a pay-per-view sparring. Everybody who saw it said it's, it's the best sparring they ever saw. And they saw a lot of sparring with their trainers and stuff, but we just go at it full power. You know? no, yeah, yeah. no holding whatsoever. <laughs> um, you've gained quite a lot, lot of following now off the back of that big fight. Do you think um, your approach to fights as you move up the levels will change at all? Or is it a case of not changing, you, what you see is what you get, I'm coming in to, to kill, basically. Yeah, yeah, listen, I'm different than all the others, you know, so I'm not afraid of no man today, because they're all, they're all doing the same thing, you know, watching, yeah. waiting, jabbing, some techniques and stuff, that's not real boxing for me, you know, real boxing was before, Jack Dempsey, you know, Jack Johnson, they, they went all yeah. in, Rocky Marciano, uh, I don't know who would you name it, Joe Fraser, Mike Tyson. You know, when Mike Tyson went through his 20 opponents in the first or second round, okay, I want to do that. You know, so I don't really care who stands in front of me. You know, Shondell is good, I respect him, but I knew he has, he has no chance whatsoever. You know, I even told him that. Yeah. See, that's, that's interesting because I, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to you, and you still can't do nothing about it. You know? yeah. The ring is too small. I'm too good at cutting corners, and uh, yeah, I don't think nobody. I don't see nobody having a chance against Savage in his full. You know. Did you know straight away? Because I watched the media face off when you were speaking to each other, and when you sort of switched into that, you know, Savage mode and said, "Listen, this is what's going to happen." Did you know from then off? Not going to last very long. 
Yeah, because he he really drew the worst out of me. You know, I was talking yeah. all good about Chanel before. You know, I was like, he's okay, respectable, blah 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 blah. And then he came at me like I don't know, like <laughs> animal. You know, oh, look at this bitch, bitch, you're such, such a mad bitch. You know, who told me that? You know, he really yeah. got, got to my nerves, and not a good place to be. You know, I wanted to hurt him bad. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I was <laughs> a little sorry after the fight because I I I caught him with some terrible punches, bro. He can take a punch, but I got him with like fifty of them. So you can't take fifty of them, you know. No, I'm gonna say when I watched it, I thought this has got to be stopped. He has he's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 he was that. hitting some bombs. I I felt it on the back of my elbow, and when I feel that, that means it's powerful punches. You know, it, it went yeah. through my hand, and, and I almost broke both of my feet because yeah. it was so hard. You know, I was hitting him clean on the forehead, on the side of the head, on the jaw. You know, I, I felt yeah. it. I felt every punch. You know. Wow. You, there was obviously it was a well put together card that night, and obviously um, you mentioned we mentioned Dillian earlier. He took um, a surprise defeat in many in many eyes to Povetkin. Um, have you managed to speak to Dillian since his defeat? And if so, what have you managed to sort of say to him? And what did you make of, you know, how that fight ended? Well, of course, I was there on the ring side, you know. When, when he stepped out of the ring, I was there first with, with his guys, you know. And I was like, Dillian, you're still my bro, you know. You're still my, still my idol. And he was like, no, it's all good, it's all good. I'm not, it's good. He just caught me. He was so aware of it. And Povetkin was the one who was walking on Shukli, you know. Povetkin was shaken, you know, visibly. Yeah. And, and Dillian was like new, like nothing happened. So he really is, is a tough man. You know? And he beat the game of boxing because he got knocked out and everybody want to see him again. I think that is the best place you can be in boxing, you know. If I got knocked out, nobody want to see me again. You know, <laughs> nobody would even ask me. You will call me right now. So he's good. Don't, don't take care about Dillian. He's very good. And, He's poised on victory in the rematch, you know, and he's such a tough guy because knockout like that and he didn't even felt it. He was like talking to Eddie, making jokes and stuff, you know. Yeah. Crazy, bro. Crazy. That's some other level. You know? I think I think the way he's handled the defeat says a lot about him because some people wouldn't have handled that very well at all. And he just said, Listen, it wasn't a lucky punch, it was just a good shot. Um people forget, I think, you know, Povetkin's an Olympi Olympian, you know, former world champion. Yeah. You know, the last thing to go is your power. So you've always got to be wary. So it just it happens. It happens. Yeah, Dillian made some mistakes because he was rushing into Povetkin. He was killing him. Yeah. And then he stopped. He was he waited. He counter punched with Olympic champ. You don't do that, you know, you don't do that. Even my fight in Shadel Winters, he's an experienced guy. If I did yeah. that, it would be a shit fight, you know. It wouldn't be a good fight. So yeah. I had to do what I had to do. And he told me that next time he's going to go savage on Povetkin, you know. Yeah, no, I... Because that's the way. He's too, too strong. Dillian is too strong when he's going forward. When he's going back first, I don't like the way he's... But when he's going forward, that's some dangerous shit, you know. Yeah. I, knew, I know it from the first hand. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah it, look, it looks very good. He was in control of the fight, and I think even in the rematch, I still think many people will have him favourite to win and put it right for definite. Yeah, that's what I said. That's a big man because you lose by a knockout and everybody loves you. So, yeah. Fuck you, bro. You know, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Everybody want to do that. You know, that's beautiful. You know, another, and it, another it really yeah. shows you a lot about it. Yeah. It shows you a lot about Dillian and his personality. Definitely. Another huge fight that obviously we're all hoping to see, but whether we see it or not, we don't know. How do you see Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua going, if it happens, from your yeah. from your perspective? Everybody asking me that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody asking me that. Listen, I think I think Tyson Fury has a little mental advantage. You know? He's mentally tougher because he's been through a lot, you know, and I can... Yeah, I can. I know because I was through a lot, and uh, that is the mental strength, you know. When you just don't care anymore, you know. I had so yeah. much losses, I just don't care. And that's the Fury lost a hundred times in his life, and he has nothing to lose. He he beat the system, he beat the life, you know. So he's yeah. a very dangerous man. He has nothing to lose. And and to Josh and the other say, uh, on the other thing, I think he's uh, 
a little bit more technical, you know, more technical. But also, again, Fury is so unorthodox. So I give it 53 to 47 to Joshua changes when I see it all because obviously it's a greater knockout power for Joshua. Yeah. It's uh, everything else for Tyson Fury, but I think I would give you Joshua a little bit of advantage. Okay. Um, obviously, have you spoken to Eddie and Dillian after your performance about who's next? Who have you got lined up and when are you next coming back out? Because I think after that performance, everyone now, whilst eyes are on you, want to see you back out and performing in the ring. Yeah. Have a day and an opponent of who, who you could be fighting? That is exactly what I wanted because I wanted to please the fans, not Dillian White, not Eddie Hearn. I love them, but I don't want to please them. I want to please the fans because yeah. as long as fans want savage, I'm going to eat, you know, this is my bread, you know. So I Absolutely. really box for the fans and I know how they can. Everybody today forgot we're only a gladiators, you know, we're only a modern day gladiator, nothing else. I, I am on the will of the fans. When they want to see me, I'm going to perform. When they don't want to see me, I'm not going to fight, you know. I'm not yeah. going to fight for myself. Or not that stupid, you know, to get my head best thing for me. I want to fight for a greater cause, you know, to bring, yeah. to bring old school guys on again, you know, to change something in boxing. Because I think we are in some... It's, it's, a, it's a different style of boxing today. You know? Everybody's very like Chandelier Winters. He's a boring fighter. Bro. He, he's good. But for me, it's boring, you know. He waits for five rounds and yeah. do this and do that. I don't like that. Let's just go in the center of the ring and see who's better, who has the better bones, you know, who's stronger. Yeah. Old school, you know. I think with you, that's what's going to draw everybody in because you're not, you're not going to hang around in a 12-round fight for six rounds. No, no. To see if, to see if Listen, it's not going to... In the first round, in the first round of Sundell Winter's fight, I threw 96 punches. So, no. Nobody does it, and like 50 yeah. of them connected. So yeah. everybody can expect that. And, and I even told him my game plan, because there's nothing you can really do. It's a chamber of truth. So no. there's nothing you can do. If you just run away, run, 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 you're going to tire. You're going to be tired. I'm, I'm good at cutting corners, you know. I do all of this stuff. You don't even see it, but I do it very good. So I think the world is going to get to know me much better through my next fights. When when are you next hoping to be out then? Has Eddie said, you know, and Dillian, when you're next going to be on? And have you got any opponents? Because I know there's a lot of talk online. I think Tom Little, Dave Allen, they've all been mentioned about fighting you. Yeah, crazy, crazy, bro. I like it. I like the attention. <laughs> I'm not a thing to think about. I like it. I'm not going to lie, you know, because all these guys want to fight me. I think it's a great fight with Tom Little. I think we're going to fight in the 10th month, uh, next month. And, yeah. and uh, on this month, I should, have fight. I, should have, I should have three fights till the end of the year. That, that's the plan. So we are working hard on that. Yeah, because I, I said I want to be old school. So four fights in four months proves that, you know. And I want to <laughs> prove the fans that I'm going to be active. I want to be active and... Uh, I think they're mentioning some guy who was in the finals with Nick Webb on the Ultimate Boxer. Oh, this guy, Barnett. I can't, remember his, I can't remember his name, but yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. No, Barnett, I think. Barnett, Barnett something. Yeah. He's, he's cool. He's like, he's like, I don't know, eight and one or whatever. I don't, he had one yeah. defeat, you know, so. He's good. He's good. And... Uh, I like that fight, so I hope it's going to be made you know, another another knockout, another big knockout. Yeah, you're not you're not bothered, are you? Who it is? You're just one of these. I can tell. Ah, you know, they're just names on a piece of paper. You're wanting to go out and just cause havoc yeah. in that ring, aren't you? Yeah, that's why I, that's why I want the, the big guys because I don't really care if they if they are like three hundred or top twenty guys. I don't care. Just the yeah. same. I do care, but the seller doesn't care. I have my alter ego, and yeah, I work yeah. hard on him, but he just doesn't care. Bro. But I, I really don't have, a, I don't have respect for Dillian when I spark him. He knows that. Yeah. No, I, I hit him with some dirty shot. And stuff. If he hits me with a dirty shot, I'm gonna return the favor. You know, yeah, I don't absolutely. do like oh you took the right the ring. I don't give you know that to anybody to do this. So I'm yeah. the master of the ring, and I'm smaller, but I will always control the ring. Gonna see it. Nobody's gonna take the center of the ring with me. You gotta, you gotta fight it to the death if you yeah. wanna be in the center. You know. The next time you two spar, 
send me a message. I will pay money to see that fa- that spa. I don't care if it's two rounds. That is an absolute war zone. Right. Let's just cut off a bit. <laughs> yeah, are we got to do For sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It just went off. Yes. Yeah. Uh, finally, before we go, I wanted to ask you one last thing. I know you've probably been asked a million times, but Filip Hergovic. Filip Hergovic. You mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned him in your post fight after the Winters win, saying he's called you out, you know, said right. you too many times you want to fight him. Is there a genuine dislike for him? Or is it just a case of he's called yeah, it's less true. Fight? No. I don't do I don't do I don't fake that, you know, because I was I was working in the streets for a long time and if I don't like you, I don't like you. If I love you, I'm gonna give you my heart. I'm gonna yeah. give you everything. But if I don't like you, it's that shit place to be, you know. It's not a good place to be. So he is on my list. I told that to everybody, I tell it to Eddie Hearn, I tell it to Dillian White. So listen, they're gonna do their job, you know. They they are the managers. I'm not the manager. So if if I'm the manager, I'm gonna fight top two guys tomorrow, but that's not the way it works, you know, I need to build up my rep, but uh, the main thing is to have fans be- be- behind me, you know, and the yeah. fans will demand it, and when the fans demand it, then even Eddie Hearn has to listen to them, you know, so I really like to, I would like to appeal to the fans, you know, I would like to show for them, you know, box for them, I want to be a fan-friendly fighter, and then all of the doors are open, you know, when they want to see me. Yeah, I think that's another great fight to make. Um, hopefully, you know, like I said, Eddie gives you these dates quick and fast so you can get locked in and get ready to go, 100%. Yeah, I would like these three fights, but at the end of the year, it's, it sounds like magic to me, you know. I would <laughs> love it. I would love it. I would, I, would, I would box for free, bro. I would box for free, literally. Just give me bread to eat. I want to box three fights by the end of the year. Four fights, four months, that is the perfect stuff for me, you know. Every month I would like a fight. I would like to fight every month, you know. Yeah. No, no matter who, just give me fight. You know, I want to entertain people. I don't want people to wait for me for like half a year to fight. Yeah. I'm not that, uh, you know, I don't think I'm that high. I don't want to fight all the time. I want to be a grinder, you know. I want to be Joe Fraser. I want to be Sugar yeah. Robinson, the guy I fought every week. You know, Joe Lewis, all those kind of guys. Yeah, proper old school. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on and speaking to me today. You've always made time for your fans. You can see you across all social media. You know, big respect. And good luck for your next fight. I'll definitely be tuning in 100%. And let me know about sparring. If you're sparring in the UK, thank you. happily come down and watch that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well, of course, we can make it. Yes. Thank you and thank all of your friends. Thank all my friends. UK friends are the greatest, greatest, you know. They upped my Instagram like from 3,000 to 11 in yeah. like two weeks. They're crazy. It's crazy, crazy stuff. So I'm going to perform. I'm really, I'm here to stay. I just want to say that, you know. I don't want to be a shooting star, you know. I'm here to stay. I want you to enjoy my fights, you know, and to, and to pick my opponents. I mean, I want to be like that, you know, like before. Yeah. I want fans to pick my opponents. But let, let me, you know, my style... You know, their style, let's mix it up, you know. This is yeah. great for me. I'll put a poll out and see if people want you to fight. I'll put a poll out. Okay. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. See ya. Bye-bye.